Hi everyone, this is a quick tutorial on the basics of the Loki Cam. On this display, we see on the left hand side of the screen a basic mechanism system with a handle that can turn either clockwise or anti clockwise and attached to that handle through an axle is a cam disc profile. So the axle will serve as a cam shaft and then as the handle is turned either clockwise or anti-clockwise that will have a direct effect of the follower that is resting on the outside disc profile. So let's say this arm is turning in an anti-clockwise direction as it's turning it will then affect the followers movement and we have then a rotary motion of the cam disc and handle that is now transferred into a linear motion of the follower which is just moving up and down up and down along the profiles edge of our cam disc so therefore we have a classic example and an easy illustration of rotary motion transferred to linear motion then on the right hand side of the screen we also see again the indication of the rotation of the shaft and in this case it is turning anti-clockwise then we have the cam profile which was on the outside edge of the cam and that profile is unique so we have various different types of cam profiles each doing its own specific job and then we also have the 45 degree hatching that must always be indicated on the camshaft itself. Let's quickly focus on the maximum displacement represented by the green construction circle which is drawn 360 degrees all around the cam disc profile. So the idea here is to show the maximum displacement of the follower throughout the 360 degrees uh, rotation. So whenever the disc profile reaches the maximum displacement, we will see that at that height of the green circles construction, that is where the follower will be positioned throughout the rotation at its maximum. We also can see where the minimum rotation for this particular disc profile would be if the follower now reaches its lowest position. So this particular example shows that the follower cannot reach lower than that particular height all around the cam profile. So when the rotation happens, this would be then the lowest position of the follower throughout the 360 degrees. So when that happens, we know that we have now the difference in maximum and lowest um, displacement. But we also need to consider that when we are looking at the camshaft and the profile of this disc would have changed, the profile could not have reached lower than what I've just drawn in here. So this part would fall away. And if the profile was then uh, changed, we would have done away with this whole part over here. And that means that the, the lowest that the profile could have gone is as indicated here, then the follower would have reached up to that point there. But lower than that, the follower cannot go because this is the outer rim of the cam shaft. So that is a solid cost and the follower cannot go lower than that. So the profile of our cam disc cannot be altered or changed lower than that position. Here is a short animation to illustrate the linear movement of the follower on the outer edge of the cam disc and this particular profile that this disc has. As you will see, the follower just moves up and down in a linear motion. And as this cam disc is turning on the shaft, we see that it is going in an anti-clockwise direction, although our follower is just following the path on the outer rim. On this display, we see the minimum displacement of the follower measured from the center of the camshaft to the closest part of the profile in this particular example. 
we also see the maximum displacement of the follower on the green construction circle that we've constructed to indicate the maximum reach of the follower away from the camshaft. In this example, we are looking at the different features of this example. So firstly, we are going to look at the follower and this is in particular a wedged ended follower. The alternative to this is the roller end follower that we use in our curriculum. The next thing that we are looking at is then the degrees in which we will label our construction. So obviously, because the direction of the scam is going anti-clockwise, we are going to label our constructions in a clockwise direction, always in the opposite direction as that of the turn of the camshaft. Next, we will be looking at the uh, hatching of our camshaft. So we remember that with camshafts, when we cut it through, we always hatch it at a 45 degree angle. And it is also proper machine hatching where the hatching is equally spaced. And then we also have the cam profile, which is the outer rim of this cam and the wedged ended follower will then run on this outer edged rim of our follower. The next thing that we need to remember is that we always divide our whole construction into 12 equal segments. So we have to go and look at the construction in the format of these 12 constructions because this is a full rotary motion, meaning from 0 to 360 degrees, and we divide it into segments of 30 degrees. And that's why we use the 12 segments. With the cam, we will also sometimes make use of um, the uh, four, 15 degree angles, and that will serve as a purpose where we want to have 45 degrees, or 135 degrees or anything that is right in the middle of these segments of ours. But that's the only difference that we will use apart from the 30 degree segments is when we hold one of these segments for a 15 degree interval in between. Nothing else, only the 30 degrees and the 15 degrees. Let's take another look at this example from the JPEGD workbook for grade 11. This is page 107 in the 2022 version. So we already know this is a wedge shaped follower. So we will look at the center lines next because this is crucial to our construction. And our 30 and 60 degree construction lines will go through the center of the camshaft. And I always ask that the full complete circle is drawn for the maximum displacement. So that first circle on the outside will always be a full construction circle. Then the cam will itself be drawn solid and hatched as we've mentioned before. But I also require that our minimum displacement will also always be drawn in with medium tone construction lines so that we have a clear understanding of where is the minimum displacement. Many people do not draw this in. I want to see this drawn in. And then what we also need to remember is that we now have our projection lines coming from the graph of displacement. All of these projection lines must always be projected up to the vertical center line, which will then meet in this case the follower but our follower can be positioned at any one of these 12 degree interval or 12 segments or 30 degree intervals so but we always will project from our graph of displacement to this vertical uh, center line these different heights that come from the graph which we will discuss in the next lesson on this display, we are looking at the maximum and minimum displacement. So let's first look at the, the minimum displacement. With the minimum displacement, we say what is the distance from the center of the camshaft to the lowest point where our wished end follower in this case 
can reach or drop down to. So this is the outer rim of the camshaft. So that's solid casted metal. So there is no ways for the follower to go lower than that indicated point because that is the minimum displacement and the, the lowest drop of our follower. And then with the maximum displacement, what we are looking at is, is the furthest displacement. So what is the maximum rise of our follower's tip to the furthest reach that it can have? Now, you will see that from zero of from 150 degrees to 120 and up to 90 degrees, uh, we have been the follower that is going to be able to reach its maximum displacement in that area of 60 degrees. So that is going to be where the follower is at its maximum reach of the, the biggest rise or the highest rise. So that is what we refer to as the maximum displacement. So as you can see, this construction circle on the outside, which is the one that I say must always be drawn in in full 360 degrees all around, uh, just to emphasize that that is the maximum reach of the follower. So this is our maximum displacement, the furthest reach of our follower. Here I am indicating what it will look like if we now have the rise, the dwell and the fall. So in this particular example, we know that our follower is starting at the minimum displacement at zero degrees. So that's where the movement starts. So then it gradually rises for the first part, which is this first 90 degrees, which I've colored in yellow here. Then it's going to dwell for the next 60 degrees, which means it's going to dwell from 90 degrees to 150 degrees. Once it's reached that 150 degrees, it's going to go and then start its descent. It's going to start to fall from 150 degrees all the way back to the starting point through all of those 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, 180, 210 degrees. So from 150 to 360 degrees, it is going to fall. Well done. This is the end of the first theory lesson on Loki cams. And I would like to thank TurboCAD Africa and JPGD for the great work that they do and the online school.